Welcome back to another clay video. Today we are going to create Lethal Lava Land from Super Mario 64. To start this one out, I'm going to be using some black clay to build up the base layer. And this base layer is what we'll be creating the entire map on top of. Usually for my maps, I lightly mix together some blue and white and it gets some nice little swirls and that's what I use for the ocean. But for this one, I wanted to try something a little bit different. I'm instead just going to take a bunch of blotches of red and cover up the black surface, but leave a bunch of spots where you can still see the black from underneath. I think this method can work out for lava, but I don't think it would necessarily work for water. After covering up all of these spots with red, I'm going to add in some swirls of orange and yellow. And using the modeling tool, I can blend them together, and this way everything's going to be more of a flat surface. With our lava complete, finally I'll go over it with a rolling pin to make sure everything is nice and smooth. Now per usual, I'm going to be using a paper printout to make sure that everything ends up having the right size, shape, and placement. Without this, I feel like it's really hard to make an accurate map. So let's start cutting out all of the different areas that we'll be creating with clay. I figured I should start with the volcano since this is kind of the most iconic area of the level. Not only can you go inside of the volcano, but it's also kind of just the main object in the center of the map. We'll start with this, and I think the rest of them on here I can just create without the paper stencil. Let's start cutting away all of the excess clay until we have our nice little ring. Now we can add in a nice brick pattern across this platform. I always find it difficult to keep the knife marks in each individual little section. If I accidentally go over into the next section, I can kind of just smooth it out with my finger. Not only are these paper stencils good for cutting out the right shape and size of everything, but they're also good for making sure that everything ends up in the right place on the map. In the center of this ring, we have a volcano, so let's hollow out the center of it and start adding in some lava. First, I added in a little chunk of red, and then on top of that, a little bit of orange and yellow that I can swirl together. Let's be honest, at this point, the volcano looks pretty boring, so let's add in a rock texture by making a bunch of random lines across the surface. That looks much better. Let's get that into place, and we can move on to making some more random platforms. These are those platforms that you see around the map that are kind of slanted on all of the edges. Which can be a little tricky to create, but they do look really nice. After that, we have a bunch of random platforms that are very easy to create, except this one on the far right was a little bit difficult to cut out. Let's get those all into place, and now we can work on the little area that's in the bottom right section, where you have to ride the log to get over to the star. Let's add in the track for the log to roll on, and add in some markings for extra detail. Here is the log. And this yellow bridge is very out of place. At first I thought the yellow would look good, but it really doesn't, so I ended up replacing it with a different color. But first, let's finish detailing all of these platforms over here. The color I'm using here, this kind of orangish brown color, is what I'm going to replace the bridge with. Now, there's four of these ramps in the level. They don't do anything specific, they're just kind of more platforms, but I think the color on top of them is nice because most of the level is gray, and this kind of helps bring some more color into the map. And these are just kind of randomly scattered throughout the level. There's also these two little hills in the level, and we can create those by making a circle and cutting it in half. It was a hard choice between all of the levels in Mario 64 to create, 
because nearly every level in this game is just amazing. It's funny to think how old the game is and it's just still so wildly popular. No matter what they create in the future, I think this is always going to be one of the best Mario games. With that being said, I'm completely open to making more maps from this game, and the one I'm looking forward to the most, I think, is Rainbow Ride. I don't know if it's possible to create with clay since everything's pretty much flying in the air, but I would like to try it out. Now back into the clay creating, we have a little platform with a few different colors of wood. And we can start creating those sort of triangle shaped platforms that dip in and out of the lava. Something I learned the hard way is that if you want to make diamonds, just create squares and tilt them to the side. There was one project I was working on that took me two hours trying to create all these little diamonds until I realized that it's just a square and you turn it. I was trying to cut them out as a diamond and it's really hard to do that. Following the same diamond design, we have this little platform, which is four platforms combined together. Over here, we need to create a bridge with some blue clay, which is the only blue thing on the map. This Bowser puzzle we will glue on after baking. I'm rolling out a bunch of worms of clay to create the fence and the cage. This was a very tedious process and took a very long time. After baking, we can start cutting these and super gluing them together to create our fence. For this first side, I decided to poke a bunch of holes and push them into it. And then use some super glue to attach these cross beams. After going through this process, I realized it's a lot easier to create this fence on the table and just push it into the clay. Using some more fence pieces, I'm going to create the cage. Now in the center of this cage, there's a little area that dips down that you can warp from. I'm not going to create this because it would be mind-numbingly difficult to figure out how to do. With that in place, we are ready to get baked. Now some might say the map is complete at this point, but I wanted to go all out and create all of the details I can on the map. So first of all, we're going to create the enemies, which are the bullies. These are actually the only enemy on the map. And we have to create eight of these guys, not including the big one. After baking, let's get these glued into place. And finally, the big boy goes over here. Now the next thing I want to create is the coins. We're going to need a lot of coins. I followed a picture to make sure that all of the coins are in the right place and the right quantity, but there's a few areas where I couldn't fit all of the coins that need to go there. And it's not a super hard detail to create and glue these little coins into place, but it really brings the map to life. Here we have those little eyeball enemies that you need to circle around really fast to kill. And then we'll cut out some red coins. We need eight of these for the Bowser puzzle. So let's take a glue stick and attach that paper onto the clay, and we can start gluing the coins into place. Now let's get those eyeballs where they need to go. And for the item boxes here, I'll be using a little wire, which I feel like is so thin you barely see it. Next, let's create all of the 1-Up mushrooms that are going to go around the map. And I've used a paint marker to make the white spot on the top because this would have been really tedious to make with clay. There is one of these mushrooms I didn't create, 
and the main reason is because I miscounted how many are on the map. But to try to justify that, the area where I was going to place it is already covered in coins, so I feel like it wouldn't really fit anyway. This was a one detail that I wasn't sure if I was going to create just because of how ridiculously small it is, but I decided, let's create Mario. Now keep in mind, this entire Mario figure is the size of my fingernail, so it's really hard to get all of these details into it. And I think it ended up looking way better than I expected. The eyes are maybe a little bit off, but besides that, I think it looks really good. Let's add in some hair on the sides. And this is what a true hero looks like. I figured I should bake him laying down because he'll probably fall over in the oven. Let's get all of our stars into place. Also, we have this crazy looking box that I drew on the design with a sharpie. And finally, let's get our hero Mario into place. And that is our final detail, so here it is, Lethal Lava Land from Super Mario 64. I want to give a huge thanks to all of my patrons over on Patreon for helping me make these videos possible. If you want to see a collection of everything in the theme of Mario I've created on my channel, I'll leave a playlist at the end of this video. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.